Hi everyone, you're welcome to So Style with GB. My name is Grace and you're welcome to another interesting video. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning how to cut and sew a long pencil skirt with hip and butt contour. I did a video earlier on how to draft a skirt with hip contour and many people loved the video. Many people that tried out that method gave me a review that the method worked for them and is a game changer for them in drafting their skates. Many people love the video, few others complain about me being a bit fast and some also said I should do a detailed sewing tutorial for them. So today's tutorial is going to be a two-in-one video. I'm going to show you how to contour the hip and also contour the butt to achieve a perfect fitted skirt just like what you are seeing on the screen. So if you are a beginner and you know how to draft a normal skirt, this won't be a problem for you. This video won't be very hard for you. You can follow it up if you know how to draft a normal skirt pattern. And I want you to know that any formula that I bring out here on my channel is something that I've tried over time and I've used over time and has always been working. Trust me, you won't get this video elsewhere. Please do me a favor by liking this video. And if you are here to subscribe, kindly subscribe. And please don't forget to drop a comment for me on the comment section. I will really appreciate that. With no further delay, let's get started. Hi, so before we get into the cutting of the skirt, I wanted to show you some things that will be essential for us in the drafting of this skirt and some things that we need to note before making our skirt. This is my mannequin as you can see. So this is the back part of the mannequin. Obviously it has a butt as you can see. It's not flat at the back. Whenever you're making your skirt, I want you to note that the back, the back hip is bigger than the front and because of that when making your skirt you are expected to allocate more hip to the back than you do to the front. So you are expected to allocate more hip to the back than you do to the front. So I'm going to show you the formula on how to do that, how to locate, allocate more hip to the back and lesser hip to the front. The allocation you do for one person might not be the same allocation you will do to the other person. So I'm going to show you the formula on how you'll be able to calculate it and allocate more hip to the back than you do to the front. So the next thing I want you to note is that from here coming towards to this part is not straight. Did you see? From the center back coming towards to the butt part is not straight and because of that we are not going to keep our pattern straight on the center back please take note of that we're not going to keep our pattern straight on the center back that's the second thing you need to do you need to note another thing you need to note as you are going to be doing hip and bust contour is that from this part coming to us to the hem part is also more straight it is not straight so from here to here is curvy so we're going to be drafting our skates using this curviness did you see we're going to be drafting our skates using this curviness so most of all the alterations you are going to do is going to be on the back part because that is where our butt is so please note that for the waist now this has a flat tummy so but for people that has a bigger tummy people that their tummy is very big i will show you how to go about that how to just add a little space for your waist Please take note of that. So I haven't seen the structure of how the human body is. So we're going to be replicating it on our pattern, following the curve on the human body. So whatever we're going to be doing now, we're going to be following the curve of the human body. And that is how you can be able to achieve a perfect fitted skirt where you, you know, take off excess from the, your on that butt and take off excess from this part to give you that curve that you want. Trust me, this class is going to be very interesting. So let's get to the cutting. To get started, for you to determine how many inches you are going to be taking from your front hip and 
and you're going to be adding to the back hip you are going to determine the difference between the waist circumference and the hip circumference so whatever the, the difference you got from your waist and your hip is what you are going to be using to do that the difference between the waist and the hip circumference is what you are going to be using so if the difference between the your waist and your hip circumference that is by the time you subtract the waist circumference from your hip and you have the difference as 0, 0 to 2.5 inches i will advise that you go ahead and divide the hip by four it means that there is no there is nothing much to take from the front hip and add to the back hip so if the difference is 0 to 2.5 inches go ahead and divide the hip by four you don't need to remove anything from the front hip but if the difference is three inches to five inches so by the time you subtract your waist circumference from your hip circumference and the difference falls between three to five inches you are going to remove 0 0.5 from the front hip and add to the back hip so if you check the difference and it falls between 5.5 inches to 7.5 inches so if the difference falls falls into 5.5 to 7.5 inches subtract one inch from the front waist from the front hip and add to the back hip so if the difference falls between 8 to 11 inches you are going to be removing 1.5 inches from your front hip and you're going to be adding it to the back hip so if the difference falls between 11.5 to 14 inches you are going to be subtracting two inches from the front hip and you're going to be adding it to the back hip so but if the difference falls between 14.5 and above if the difference falls into 14.5 and above i will advise you use 2.5 inches to 3 inches so using this now using this method you'll be able to know how much you are going to be taking from the front hip and adding and and what you're going to be adding to the back hip so these are what you are going to be needing so when you subtract your waist circumference from your hip and it falls between 0 0.25 inch it means new so what you need to do is divide the hip by four if it is three to five inches after subtracting you are removing 0 0.5 if it is 5.5 to 7.5 you remove one inch if it is eight to 11.5 remove 1.5 if it is 11.5 to 14 inches remove 2 inches and from 14.5 and above you can remove 2.5 to 3 inches so the formula states that your back hip is equal to your total hip circumference divided by 2 plus the value that you got so if your value falls between 0 0.5 1 inch 1.5 that is what you are going to be writing on that place that says value so you are dividing your hip total hip circumference by two and you are adding that value if it is five zero point five you add zero point five if it is one inch you add one inch so that is how you get the that is how you get your back um hip so from for the front hip now the front hip states that your total hip circumference divided by two you total hip circumference divided by two minus that value minus that value if your own value is 0 0.5 you are going to be minusing by 0 0.5 if it is one inch you're minusing by one inch so that is how this formula works for me now i'm going to be using my formula and i'm going to be getting my back hip first so my waist circumference is 26 inches and my hip circumference is 37 inches so when you subtract 37 when you subtract 26 inches from 37 inches you are going to be having 11 inches so i have mine as 11 inches so that 11 inches i'm going to be using it to check on this place where it falls so that that 11 inches falls between 8 to 11 inches which is 1.5 so i'm going to be taking 1.5 from my front hip and i'm going to be adding it to the back hip 
So my back hip now states that the formula states that my total hip, which is 37 divided by 2 plus that value, which in my own case in my own case i have as 1.5 inches so 37 divided by 2 is going to give me 18.5 so the 7 divided by 2 will give me 18.5 plus the 1.5 inches plus 1.5 inches so i have it as 20 inches so my front hip my back hip is going to be 20 inches so the front hip states that 37 inches which is my total hip divided by 2 minus the 1.5 inches so 37 divided by 2 is going to give me 18.5 minus 1.5 inches i am going to have it as 17 inches so in this case 20 inches is my back hip why 17 inches is my front hip so 20 inches my back hip is equal to 20 inches and my front hip is equal to 17 inches in your own case it might differ but for me this is what i got so i also want to state that if your waist is bigger than your hip if your client's waist is bigger than the hip please go ahead and divide the hip by four this formula does not apply to that person when your waist is bigger than the hip please go ahead and divide the waist by four this formula does not apply to it so if you have a big tummy or protruding tummy this is the formula you are going to be using your front hip is going to be waist your weight your, your total waist circumference divided by two plus 0 0.5 or one inch this is if you have protruding tummy you have a very big tummy so for the back waist you are going to say your total waist circumference minus 0 0.5 inches or one inch depending on how big your tummy is for me i don't use this because i have a flat tummy my tummy is not big so i go ahead to divide my tummy by four inches so now we want to draft out the front pattern so the front pattern at the hip though my front hip is 17 inches from what we have checked so 17 inches and i'm drafting one part of the front so i'm uh, I'm going to divide the 17 inches by 2 and I'm going to have it as 8.5 so I'm going to be using that 8.5 to get the width of my front pattern paper and the reason is because my hip is the biggest so after dividing my front hip which is 17 inches by 2 I have it as 8.5 so I'm going to be using that 8.5 to get the width of my front pattern So after doing that, this is what I have. I have marked my starting point line. So in case you want to cut out a band, you want to remove the band allowance before marking your measurement. But for me, I am doing a bandless skirt. It does not have band, so I'm not removing the band allowance. So from the starting point line, I'm going to keep my tape and mark my hip depth line. And then I went ahead to mark my new line. So all the alteration and contouring we are going to be doing is basically on the back part. So here is my hip line, my hip depth line, and here is the my new line. Did you see that? So I'm going to go ahead and label hip line and the new line. So this is what I have. So drafting out the front pattern. So this is the length. As you can see the length so i'm making use of a length the length of 39 inches which is also the the same thing with this pattern paper so drafting out the front part is very easy trust me so on the starting point line you want to mark one quarter of your waist circumference so i divided my waist by four that is what i'm using one quarter of my waist circumference and then i will add one inch for my dart allowance my dart allowance i'm going to be adding one inch for my dart allowance and i'm going to be taking this to the hip so i'm going to come off from the hip by one inch to connect this you don't want it to get to the hip if you're in a plus size you can use 1.5 inches or two inches you can decide to come up 1.5 inches or two inches so you can see i have done that so the next thing is to mark my dart and my dart is half of my nipple to nipple measurement and i took half inch on both sides so i'm going to also mark that line on the hip line and then i'm going to like connect my dart so i'm going to stop my dart two inches above my hip line 
two inches above my hip depth line so that is where i stopped my dart and i took that of one inch half inch on both side so this is the the front part now so on the side seam you want to go up by half inch because this is how the human body is and on the center front which is here you want to come down by one inch so this is because of our tummy you want to remove every um, excesses around that point so now you want to go ahead and connect this for me to connect this and avoid shorting my pattern I'm going to be connecting this line to the dart line like this that leg and this one to the other that leg so that I will not be able I will not shorten my dart another thing you can do is just go up and close that that line did you see and then when you close it up you use your your curve ruler to connect that did you see that so this is what I have when I'm done. So this is what I have for the upper part now. So the next thing is whatever I have on my hip line, I am going to be subtracting one inch from it. And that is what I'm going to be marking on the knee line. So for me, I normally use three inches for my knee. Like I normally remove three inches for my knee. So instead of dividing it by two inches, removing 1.5 from the front and removing 1.5 from the back, I remove only one inch from the front and remove two inches from the back and I love the outcome. So on the knee line, I went inward by one inch from the hip line. And whatever I have on the knee line, I'm going to be bringing it down to the length of the skirt. Hope you are clear on what I've explained. So this is very easy. Whatever you have on your knee line, you subtract one inch from it. Whatever you have on your hip line, you subtract one inch from it and mark on your knee line. So that is how I was able to get that. So the next thing is the draft the back part to draft the back part you want to also check the back hip the back hip is 20 inches you want to go ahead and divide 20 inches by two because you are drafting one part of the back and then you want to place your tape on this straight line and mark that 10 inch 10 inches when you divide the 20 inches by two you're going to have 10 inches which is going to be the width of your pattern so i'm marking 10 inches all around like from the straight line i'm marking 10 inches that is going to be my back pattern so this is the center front this is the side seam for the front so here is the center back the center back means the zipper allowance where the zipper is going to be so the next thing is to mark from my my waistline to the hip depth and then i'm going to mark from my waistline to my underbolt note that i'm going to be contouring my underbolt so i'm marking from my waistline to my underbolt and my waistline to the new line so i'm going to show you a video on how to take your waist to your underbolt so you want to measure from your waist to your underbot like this did you see that so this is how you measure from your waist to the underbot so i'll just go ahead and rule the line my hip depth line my underbot line my knee line and the length of my skirt pattern so this is the hip depth this is the underbot because i'm going to be contouring the underbot if you don't want to contour the underbot you can go ahead and you don't need to like mark the underbot line you don't need to do this so from this part now if you observe how the human body eats so from the center back coming towards the bum bum side or the butt side is not straight is like a bit inverted and that is the reason why we are going to be considering that we are going to be taking those excesses because if you leave that part straight it's not going to relax on your bum so you're going to be taking off excess from that part so to do that from the center back here on the waistline you want to go inward by one inch from your hip line come up by one inch and then you want to like connect so this will help you take off that excesses around there and make your zipper to relax well so for people that have a very big protruding tummy um sorry hip for people that have a, a big protruding butt you can go inward by 1.5 instead of one inch so on the underbots now we want to like contour the underbots so from the underbots i'm coming inward by uh one inch observing how the human body is so from the underbots to the hip to the 
but now it's not straight it's a bit inside so that is the reason why we are doing this so i came inward from that center back and tried to connect like contour that part to be able to achieve a very perfect fitting for my skirt on the nail i also came inward by one inch and with a straight lula from the underboard to the nail i marked a straight line and then i also went ahead to like extend the straight line to the length so from the underboard towards the center back i came inward by one inch as you see me do and then connect with a curve to the hip line so this is how the human body is on the center back towards that zipper line that is how your body is and you should always observe that so the next thing you want to do is on your waistline you want to mark one quarter of your waist circumference plus 1.5 inches i am using 1.5 inches for that so whenever i'm doing something like this i normally use 1.5 inches for my back that for the front i used one but for the back i use 1.5 inches and i connected to the hip so you want to go ahead and take your dart measure half of your nipple to nipple measurement and take 0 0.75 inch on both sides which is going to give you the 1.5 inches that and then from the hip line you go up by two inches and connect your dart so this is very very simple trust me this is very simple so on this part you also want to raise it up by 0 0.5 inch just like you did for the front because you you know you that that's how the body is so this is what i have though on the hip line now i have it as 20 inches on my knee line i'm going to be subtracting two inches from what i have on the hip line and i'm going to be marking it so starting from this part i will subtract two inches and if i subtract two inches i'm going to have it as eight inches so i subtracted two inches from what i have on the hip and that is what i marked on the knee line so now for the under part, you want to go ahead and like subtract either one inch, 1.5 inches. In my own case, I subtracted 1.5 inches. So if you have a very big butt, whatever you have on your hip, you can go ahead and subtract two inches from it and mark on your under butt. For me, I use 1.5 and... Um, that is what i used so and 1.5 is the highest i can use depending on how big your butt is you can decide to use one inch 1.5 or 0 0.75 inch or 1.25 but for this part i use 1.5 inches and then you, after you are done connecting you want to extend your line from the knee to the down part on the knee line i subtracted whatever i what i have on the hip by two inches and marked on the knee on the under board i subtracted 1.5 inches from white what i have on the hip line and marked on the under board so with this you can see i have contoured my under board did you see that i have contoured my under board so that is how you do that but if you don't want to contour your under board you can skip the process of the under board and just concentrate on the knee line whatever we did on the knee and just mark so i'm going to follow the way the curve is and go ahead and mark one inch for my zipper allowance if you are using one inch you are using two inches depending on what you are using and this is going to be my uh, my zipper line so if what if you don't want to contour your underboss please don't do this just from your new you want to go ahead and connect to the hip line did you see you want to skip that underboard process from your knee line you want to go ahead and connect and and you want to also do the same for this part i i will also say that if the person you are working with does not have like a butt maybe the back is like flat i will advise you skip the underboard process the underboard is for people that have but whether a bit small whatever but you should have that curve a bit on the back but if it, the person is flat maybe for a teenager you don't need to do all of this so this is what i have when i'm done drafting this pattern so i'll go ahead and cut my pattern if you want me to do a skirt pattern for a plus size it's going to be something like this 
with a bit alteration for plus size please leave a comment for me on the comment section and you can as well drop your plus size measurement so i can use it to draft the video so please leave a comment for me on the comment section and trust me i'm going to do the video if you have gotten value so far please please like this video and share please don't forget to like this video thank you very much so in my next tutorial i'm going to be doing a sewing video a detailed sewing video of this skirt with a full lining if you want to see it i'm going to be dropping it in my next tutorial till then bye